Hello DHS! The Deck is back with an exciting new episode. To our new viewers, welcome! To our longtime fans, glad to have you back. A lot is going on around the DHS campus. Rehearsals for Rock and Roll Review are ramping up in preparation for their upcoming performances. Plus, spring break and prom are just around the corner, and I think all the juniors and seniors are excited about going to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. All right, let's get into the show. Before we start this episode, we would like to take a moment of silence to honor Bryce and Ellis. Ellis's passing has affected us all, and it's important that we come together to love and support each other in this difficult time. Thank you. Now, let's take a look at some news from around the world. In the past few weeks, several senators and representatives have announced their candidacy for president. Bernie Sanders, who ran for the Democratic nomination in 2016, is running once again on a platform of completing the political revolution that he started. His slogan is, not me, us. Elizabeth Warren is also running for president, hoping to become the first female president of the United States. She's running on a platform of rebuilding the middle class and ending corruption in politics. In international news, India and Pakistan clashed once again over the disputed territory of Kashmir. This conflict has been ongoing ever since India and Pakistan gained independence from Britain in 1947. The U.S. is currently looking into reports that Pakistan violated an arms agreement. Following the death of NASA's Mars rover Opportunity, the European Space Agency plans to launch another rover in July of 2020. The rover is named after English chemist and DNA pioneer Rosalind Franklin. Now we go to Hallie Gordon, who has a profile on Lydia Hamby, a DHS sophomore and ballet dancer. Hi, I'm Lydia Hamby. I've been dancing for 13 years and I started when I was three years old. Lydia Hamby's love for dance began at a young age. Well, when I was little, my dad bought me a DVD called Bella Ballerina. And it's basically this kid's video that just shows the basic different ballet positions. And it comes with a ballet bar and a ballet mat with some positions that are drawn onto the mat. And I just fell in love with ballet. And so my parents put me in a creative movement class and when I was three. Even at a young age, Hamby quickly began to be inspired by her peers. And then I began watching the older dancers in my dance school perform on stage and I was just so inspired by them because they were just amazing dancers and they had the best technique and they could just execute every movement perfectly. Hamby enjoys telling a narrative through movement. I feel like in every single piece you're sharing a story, especially in the classical um, ballet, uh, different shows and dance performances, they're always sharing a story, which is amazing. Hamby has learned a variety of famous ballet variations. And I also love learning variations because it's little snippets of the different dance pieces that I get to learn. So I've learned stuff like Bluebird, Cupid, um, Don Q, which are all super fun. And I got to perform Don Q with um, my dance partner, Charles. As Hamby grew older, she learned that the ballet community was very competitive. With her only being 4'11", she found herself surrounded by taller dancers, which she struggled with throughout the years. As a dancer, you're always competing with the dancer next to you and your peers. And so a lot of my peers are taller than me and they're all amazing dancers. And so I want to be exactly like them. And you can't really change your height, and so that's something that I can't control, which makes it even harder to be okay with. Dance is such a big part of my life now that I couldn't imagine not having dance in my life in the future. 
I would love to minor in dance in college or even just be a part of the dance team or a company there. And then in the future as an adult, I wouldn't mind being part of it in some way because, you know, dance is a part of my life and I don't want to take that away. Can I have some? Mm -hmm. And what are you looking forward to in this season? This season, just having fun. Um, well, two things, having fun, you know, as my senior year. The second thing is, is leaving a sustainable team going forward. Like I said before, you know, our entire, entire varsity is seniors. And that's like literally our entire varsity. So making, like kind of building up the JV team so they can, you know, transfer into the varsity team and just kind of have a continuing, like I want to come back in five years and they'll still be an ultimate team. So you know, this year you were talking about adding a JV team. Mm -hmm. did, did that happen? Yeah, so uh, like between last year and this year, we got a JV team in. Um, and so now we have three teams and like our, um, our mascot or whatever is Cerebrus, which has three heads, which Come symbolizes back, the three teams that we have. So it's uh, the varsity, the JV, and the girls team. So yeah, it was really good. Sorry, we have a lot of uh, middle school players now, so we just kind of have to have a JV team. Oh. This year we have a lot of uh, seniors, and so like our entire varsity team is pretty much just seniors. Um, and, and with that, we've just been playing with each other a long time. So it's I feel like it's a lot more comfortability on the field and, and team chemistry. We had like maybe one practice before our game and like the entire varsity showed up to the game, didn't show up to practice. And we just like went out there and dominated. Well, actually what happened last year was we had like about three sponsors and they ended up leaving at the same time. So, you know, going into the year, we didn't have any sponsors. So I, I, I had to do a lot of work um, just to get Mr. Kessel on board. You know, I talked to a lot of teachers, um, but we definitely had a lot more support. And I'm um, just, I'm really excited to see where our varsity goes this year. Last year, we didn't really perform that well. But, you know, like I said before, we've just grown a lot. Um, and, you know, this is the year for us to, to, to go crazy. So we just got to do it. Thanks for the update. Next up, we have a trailer for Nations of Intolerance, a short documentary by Alonzo Leviosa. Be sure to check out the full documentary at youtube.com slash the deck. When Hitler came to power in 33, there was already a lot of talk about war. And then I was very young, I didn't understand, but in 39, when the Nazis occupied Belgium, we had to go into hiding, which was arranged through the underground, and we were stuck in that attic for three and a half years. There was always a nervous feeling and vibes in the household. It really forces you to be part of a team, like a sport, uh, and you're not just worried about like you know grades or like your future or whatever. You're just focused on not disappointing the people around you and just being the best you can. And it's just a great place to like express yourself with all these other like-minded people who all love to like sing and dance and act, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. I really like. There's this uh, song called Kiss the Girl, and in it, I'm a turtle, and I like play the bongos, and I really like doing that. I think it's pretty fun to do, and I really want to, you know, dress in a turtle costume for the show. I think it's going to be funny. Under the Sea. This is a really grand song, and all of us are singing, and some of us are dancing on stage. And it's, it's very fun. I think my favorite part is She's in Love. That's the dance number that Flounder has with the Murr sisters when he's discovering that Ariel is in love. And for a brief moment, he thinks that maybe she's in love with him. I expect to see a lot of, you know, kind of big showman stuff, a lot of big scenes, colorful sets. Um, okay, well, first of all, I like the camaraderie of everybody. I like the group of, of like students who do it. And then I also love the teachers, and I love um, well, I love the show that we're doing, Little Mermaid. Everyone should come and see it. 
and I also just love singing and acting and it's a great place to do that. I want them to know that we work very, very hard on these shows and that it means the world to us when people come to see them. Without the audience members, we really don't have anything. <laughs> they should expect to see a lot of cool costumes. Um, the Disney show that they all love and know with like a few more songs and like a few more different like plot points and stuff. And yeah, some great music and some great set pieces as well. I'm Fiona, and I play the ukulele, bass, guitar, and a lot of instruments, including the banjo. This is Bruno Jr. My favorite song to play on the banjo is Cripple Creek and Banjo in the Hollow. You play them together, and they were the first songs I learned, and so you can play them really fast, and they sound all nifty. So it varies so much, and but it still has a sort of culture surrounding it. So in very early jazz, when it started being recorded, the drum kit sounds messed up the recording equipment and made a really messed up recording and it wouldn't work. And so they decided to add banjo. And so if you listen to some really old um, early jazz recordings, you can hear banjo in the background instead of a snare, which is a little, I feel like it's a little shout out to banjo players. I also know a few people in my family who played banjo uh, my great-grandfather played in the army and my, um, my mother's cousin played uh, like growing up in the South. The instrument itself is held in common between those like, three generations in my family. For the deck, this is On the Record. I'm Fiona Morkish. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to see more stories by our crew, check out 310.org. If you want to see more episodes of The Deck, check out our YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time on... The Deck.